on the other side. So if you're locked in because of Shadow Tag, at least you'll eventually be able to knock out the Gothitelle. Yeah, and I think crucial too, there's a bunch, uh, other than Groudon, you know, there's a bunch of uh, special attacking Pokemon and Gavin's side of the field. Uh, one thing you really have to be careful with against the, the Gothitelle and Cinderor duo, just getting a physical attacker locked in and kind of just having a useless slot for too much of the game. You know, even if a Pokemon's awake, you know, if it's like three, four levels of reduced attack, it's not doing anything. All right, so game one of top eight between Gavin Michaels and Justin Burns. Gavin with a Charizard Grimmsnarl lead, and Justin locking those two in with the Gothitelle Palkia. Yeah, so uh, things you maybe like on both sides here, where uh, no threat of seeing a, a, another Gothitelle lock in a Groudon and just kind of whittle its attack down, but you know, Charizard is facing down uh, Palkia here, where uh, not as bad as seeing Kyogre, but still uh, not the best type matchup there, but we do see a uh, turn one uh, Gigantamax here. Right, and we'll see if uh, what Justin's going to go for as well. But for now, you will have the Gigantamax Charizard. So that is what we talked about in Team Preview, where if you can just G-Max Wildfire and get that residual damage rolling every single turn, maybe it is worth it to trade your Charizard just to get rid of the Gothitelle. Uh, and then on the other end, there is a Dynamax. Okay, that's what I was wondering if Justin was going to Dynamax Palkia as well. So this Max, Max Geyser can hurt. Yeah, I mean, this is a really dangerous trait. It uh, makes a lot of sense on Gavin's side, where with this like, sort of defensively oriented team, you want to get that residual damage going, but uh, losing your own Gigantamax Pokemon this quickly could be dangerous. Uh, uh, tenuous turn here. Yeah, and that is, uh, I think that's a trade Justin will gladly take. If you want to take out my Gothitelle and I get rid of your G-Max Pokemon, that is worth it. Fake out into the Grimstar, so we will not be able to set up a light screen this turn. And here's the G-Max Wildfire into Gothitelle. Brings it down to 17, which is well enough in range to be knocked out from G-Max Wildfire's damage at the end of the turn. The question is, is this Max Geyser going to be a one-hit KO into G-Max Charizard? And the answer is yes. You really don't train Charizard to defensively because you want as much damage as possible. So Gavin quite literally traded G-Max Charizard for Gothitelle. Yeah, I mean, Charizard did a job there. We'll have to see if Gavin's game plan plays off here. Uh, I don't think he's surprised at all that Justin did what he did. So, uh, you know, that's just the trade he decided he needed. Uh, he does get that wildfire down. So, you know, Charizard, even though it's uh, back in its Pokeball now, going to continue to put up some damage over the next few turns. Uh, crucially, too, with Gothitelle down, that's one Pokemon who, uh, at least for the rest of this battle, isn't going to be using Trick Room. Uh, it's still something important for Gavin to probably try to control here. Uh, and he's got the Lunala now, uh, you know, his other restricted Pokemon, and another Pokemon that uh, could potentially play the Trick Room game. Right, and here is another Trick Room Pokemon in Calyrex Ice Rider, who, we, you know, we've actually talked about Gothitelle not liking seeing the Lunala and the Moon Guys beam. But, you know, Calyrex doesn't like it either. Yeah, I think that's probably part of uh, Gavin's strategy here, right? Where, um, you know, Calyrex, if the Trick Room had been up, would have had the advantage here, but now it's the other way. Uh, Lunala is really threatening, and Calyrex has to protect. Yep, there is the protect, so in case Lunala went for an attack into that slot, no damage will come up. Light screen from Grimmsnarl, he's finally able to attack, or using a move this turn because he was fake out it last time. Here is the Max Quake, though, from Palkion in second turn of Dynamax into Lunala. Not doing a lot of damage, but importantly, breaking the Shadow Shield, so now uh, it does, it doesn't have access to its, you know, very important ability anymore. Yeah, some crucial special defense boost going in as well. And then Moon Guys Beam goes into the Protector, so Justin made the correct call by protecting Calyrex. Yeah, nice play by Justin there. I think it's a little more out of that turn. Uh, both sides just trying to uh, reduce the damage of the uh, special type attacking restricted Pokemon, but uh, there's some cat and mouse here, right, where uh, even with the special defense boost, uh, you know, it's a risky move to try to allow that uh, Calyrex to be hit by the Moon Guys Beam, but, um, you know, Lunal's getting, getting to get whittled down a little bit here, even though it has the light screen now, losing the Shadow Shield's kind of an even trade, and uh, we see both Pokemon staying in. Reflect from Grimstone here, so now both phys physical attacks and special att attacks are gonna have their damage lowered. Max Quake on this third turn of Dynamax from Palkia will give yet another special defense boost to both the Palkia and Calyrex Ice Rider, so you don't even need to protect anymore if you're at plus two special defense against it. It's still gonna hurt, obviously, because it is a Lunala after all, uh, but this Moon Guys Beam targeting into the Calyrex, it's going to matter for Justin if at plus two special defense. Calyrex is pretty bulky, it is super, it is super effective though, and actually not even uh, not even close to a knockout there thanks to the Max Quake boost. And here is the Glacial Lance in return, connecting onto both as it is a spread attack for Calyrex. Lunala is about at half health, not enough for a knockout though. Yeah, still it's a lot of damage, it's enough where it should be in knockout range from one of Palkia's attacks now. And uh, you see the importance of building up that special defense. Uh, both sides kind of playing a, a little different game than maybe we've seen from the uh, Calyrex teams previously, where uh, instead of worrying too much about getting the speed advantage, they're just increasing their defensive stats enough that they can trade back and forth and it doesn't really matter who went first.
Yeah, exactly. Because at that point, as long as you can, as long as you can take that damage, you're able to, you know, push push it back onto the other side. But because Grim Snarl has set up the light screen and the reflect, it's actually, you know, kind of problematic against both of these restricted pairs because they're one one physical attacker, one special attacker. Yeah, I mean, they're gonna have a hard time finishing these Pokemon up. And Lunala is kind of in trouble here, where uh, it seems like just enough damage was done. But there's still another Pokemon in the back on Gavin's side. Um, even though both of them have one extra Pokemon remaining, you know, we've seen both restricted Pokemon from Justin's side, both of them getting whittled down here. Uh, you know, we're seeing the after effect of GMAX Wildfire as well, right? Where even though we've kind of had this defensive play, damage keeps ticking. And the Lunala will switch out, so Gavin is going to reveal his fourth Pokemon he brought to game one, and the answer is Groudon. That's going to set up the sun thanks to Groudon's drought ability, so that'll boost any fire type uh, attacks to damage while the sun is up. Cowards with another protect, so Justin actually thought the Moon Guy's Beam was going to go into that slot again this turn, but instead he switched out, and Grimstar with the spear break into Palkia brings it down to 13 HP, not enough for a knockout, but does lower this special attack. Oh. Palkia doesn't go for Hydro Pump, though. Instead, he goes for Trick Room. Oh, that's huge. Uh, it seemed like uh, Gavin might have just gotten the one. And we do see the Wildfire kicking one more time. Uh, see you, Palkia, but uh, gets its job done, though. Does get the speed control up first. I, uh, crucially, uh, Gavin gets away with switching Groudon into Calyrex, which is a bold play that paid off there. Um, and yeah, now this Calyrex needs that speed advantage. You know, there was no way it was attacking again otherwise. Uh, and Cinderella are going to come in here and help uh, defend it. But uh, this is a, it's a tight spot where uh, there's not a whole lot of threat coming the other way to Calyrex. But, you know, with only, uh, what is it, 27 HP, uh, got to be really careful not to let anything through. Right, and then the uh, the Palkia is like, let me twist the dimensions real quick, and then I'll head out. You know, yeah, it was like yeah. that was. That let's see, Incineroar come in for Intimidate and Fake Out, and then a huge move too, right? Because they avoided that Life Orb recoil that uh, otherwise, uh, you know, would have led to a much worse spot. Yeah, so in this spot, if you are Gavin, you still can theoretically switch out the Groudon to reset your uh, your Intimidate drop. But at that point, you would be essentially, you know, letting Lunala take the Glacial Lance in its slot, which would be pretty dangerous. Protect instead is the call for the ground on here. So in case the cowards went for a Glacial Lance, it will stop it. The fake out actually also, that's why you protect because you don't want to get hit by the fake out from Incineroar. And this Glacial Lance is only going to be able to connect on to the Grim Snarl on this turn. So it does, we do have the Reflect still up for the next couple of turns. So it is not enough for Grim Snarl because he's able to get the Spirit Break off into that 27 HP Calyrex and that is enough to take it down. And Justin, all he's got left is Incineroar. Yeah, I mean, you know, Incineroar is a great Pokemon, but usually want it coming in and out of battle. Uh, it's the last Pokemon here with a ground on the other side of the field who now can shake off that Intimidate. Uh, you've got to like Gavin's positioning, but it's just that close, right? You know, in a different scenario, if that uh, Ice Land or to picked up the knockout, you know, get a chilling Nay boost, maybe we see uh, the game going the other way. Oh, the scary <laughs> face into his own ground on to make him under speed in Trick Room. Precipice Blades is single target into Incineroar, and he brings him down to around 25% of his HP. Let's see if the Flare Blitz is going to knock itself out. No, it goes into Grimstar instead of the ground on, so there's not a lot of recoil damage there. So now you have the super slow ground on in Trick Room. Yeah, Gavin showing why he's such a fun player there. Uh, I assume Justin knew about that one because like, that's a terrible reveal otherwise. But you know, at this point in the tournament, uh, you, you got to assume that both sides knew that trick is available. Uh, but something to keep an eye on future games. Uh, for, for this game, I think Gavin just styling a little bit, and we do see the forfeit going through there. But uh, that's a great uh, move to talk about a little bit between games here because, um, you know, a scary face in a scenario where perhaps the result of the game is actually still in question, uh, really scary, right? Where it's hard just to trick room when you that Grim Snarl is out there because if that had happened instead in a different scenario where there wasn't a fake up being threatened, you know, a scary face onto uh, ground on there, it would have just knocked out the Calyrex itself, right? Um, so, yeah, I think Justin was not quite as close maybe to pulling that one back as it had looked uh, now that we know for sure that uh, that move is on Grim Snarl. It is so funny because usually you have scary face because you want your opponent or you want your Pokemon to move before your opponents, but instead this time he actually punished Justin for setting up the trick room. Yeah, I think that's some of the value of the move, right? Where uh, you can kind of go either way with it, where uh, a lot of the other uh, speed control moves in the game are a little bit more inflexible, right? Where it only really does one thing, but uh, since it just affects the speed stat, right? I mean, sometimes having a high speed stat is good, other times having a high, high speed stat is bad. Um, and I think it's a really good tool in this matchup. I think one of the reasons why we've seen some of these Lunadon teams struggle a little bit is if, you know, they get, if Trick Room becomes active against a slower team, they kind of just fall over because so many of these Pokemon uh, are not very strong to Defensively, I think this version of a team a little bit smarter, right? Where um, not so easy to actually get that speed advantage. And even if you're under Trick Room, you know, you still have that opportunity to trade blows. Uh, and that could be applied to any of the Pokemon on the team, right? Where it doesn't have to be Groudon, you know. Uh, none of
none of these Pokemon are immune to Scary Face except for Incineroar because of the Prankster immunity. So uh, a lot of options for potentially uh, sneakily underspeeding in Trick Room. I'm really excited to find out what Justin's adjustment is in game two because we talked about G-Max Wildfire before team preview. It's like, if you can knock out Gothitelle, you don't have to worry about Shadow Tag, you don't have to worry about Hypnosis, you know, and Gavin was able to effectively do that on turn one. So now what is Justin's adjustment here with the Gothitelle? Do you not click Fake Out because you think the Hypnosis is, is more important or maybe, uh, maybe switch up your lead altogether? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a big deal because, yeah, the previous time we'd seen uh, this team show up on stream, you know, Gothitelle is just such a big problem, right? Um, and I think this matchup is still, it's close enough, right, where um, it, it's easy to imagine, you know, a couple turns the other way and we have a different result. So uh, you really don't want Goth Gothitelle getting off hypnosis um, or even like, you know, potentially a big helping hand in the right situation. I didn't need it in that first game where <laughs> one game of, uh, Gigant or one turn of Gigantamax was exactly enough. But, um, you know, perhaps either preserving it or either going with a different Pokemon, right? where um, if Gavin's so committed, just like, all right, you know, uh, I get Gothitelle, then maybe you just have to go a different route. Yeah, and Justin, who at this point has top cut four consecutive Sword and Shield regionals that Justin has went to. So the, you know, ultimate, cons ultimate consistent player in VGC at this day wants to try to force a game three. Gavin will lead Lunala Grimmsnarl, and it is the same lead for Justin in Gothitelle and Palkia. It's so interesting here where uh, perhaps uh, either Gavin expecting an adjustment on Justin's side or uh, maybe thinking he can get an even better deal than he got in game one. Yeah, you, you wonder because the, uh, the Lunala, you can Moongeist beam the Gothitelle and not take your G-Max slot for it. But Lunala missing Hypnosis, that's huge there. He's not going to be able to put, or if you've got to tell Miss Hypnosis onto the Lunala. Hydro Pump does not KO Grim Snarl. Instead, it will be down into the red. And here is the Moongeist Beam from Lunala. So that's devastating for Justin to have missed that Hypnosis because it will bring Gothadel down to 1 HP. And you wonder because Grim Snarl did not go for a prankster attack. That means it probably went for the Spirit Break. If it's into the Gothitelle, that's it. There's no more Shadow Tag. There is no more Hypnosis in this game. Yeah, that's a huge swing there. I mean, Hypnosis, uh, you know, uh, doesn't hit 50% of the time, but uh, even that 60, you know, it's uh, not always the most reliable and, you know, doesn't hit there. Uh, causes Gothitelle, instead of uh, having great board position with a trapped sleeping Pokemon instead of knockout the other way. And uh, we've seen a, another adjustment here, a Rillaboom making its first appearance of the set. Yeah, Rillaboom actually coming in this game, considering that the G-Max Charizard was effective for Gavin, that's a, uh, an interesting adjustment for Justin to bring the grass type here. It has somewhat worked out because at this current moment, Charizard's not on the field. Yeah, and uh, you know that Grimstarl uh, looking like a uh, great bait. We don't have a, uh, any supportive moves for that Grimstarl on the board yet. Where uh, so they had to go for the attack. You know, uh, we haven't seen uh, light screen reflect yet. Uh, option for Rillaboom just to kind of go in there, prevent that from ever happening this time. I may be able to get a little bit more damage because uh, last game, you know, Gavin did such a nice job of kind of just it was stalling out and causing uh, his Pokemon to be so sturdy. But uh, Grimstarl's getting out of here. It needs to support Pokemon later. Yes, and Gavin will switch the Incineroar into that slot, who obviously can deal with the Rillaboom very well, but does not want to take a Hydro Pump from the Palkia, if that is what happens. Here is the Meteor Beam, though, from Gavin. So let's see, 90% of the time, it will be a pretty strong attack, as it is a two-turn attack. But thanks to Power Herb, it's going to be able to activate in one. Get the special attack increase before you even attack. So that means you're already at plus one special attack here. So uh, this attack going into the Palkia, who is pretty healthy, is able to take that very well. And then Rillaboom U-turning out. A great U-turn from Justin, because now he is not threatened by the Incineroar. Yeah, it gets away from Incineroar and does get to break that uh, Shadow Shield. So uh, for, you know, kind of a feeble-looking attack, there's actually a lot of value there. And Calyrex is Justin's fourth Pokemon, who, at, you know, in the same vein as Rillaboom, is really also not excited to face down an Incineroar. And Gavin has access, because he just switched in. Uh, he has access to Fake Out next turn. But the, the Palkia didn't go for Hydro Pump. Instead, it's twisting those dimensions, which is perfect for these two slow Pokemon on Justin's end. Yeah, that went from, like, a, a really good U-turn to, like, the super ultra mega great U-turn, <laughs> where uh, that was an aggressive trick room. But, yeah, I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of threat coming out to, to actually stop it. So uh, good by Justin to grab that Trick Room. And uh, important to note, Lunala's HP as well does not quite get that Shadow Shield back, just a single hit point short of getting its uh, shield back. Ah, oh, you hate to see that if you are Gavin. You're so close to having that pivotal ability that you don't have access to now. On this turn, Incineroar is going to switch out for Gavin into the Groudon again, or so... We've actually seen all four of his Pokemon in this match, and that means he did not bring Charizard this 
time around. Justin is going to Dynamax. The sun is up, so if it is the Palkia slot, no, it's not. Palkia is still going to have that reduced damage on any of its water attacks thanks to the drought. Instead, it is Calyrex Ice Rider going to Dynamax this turn. Have a very strong Max Hailstorm or Max Quake or whatever attack it wants to go for. Gavin's also responding as well with the Dynamax Lunala. So it's not a Pokemon we see Dynamax very often, but I really like it. I think with this, especially with that Shadow Shield not being active, uh, just trying to Trick Room back wasn't likely to be very successful here. So uh, Gavin picking a different method to try to ensure that Lunala gets some attacks off. Yeah, at that point, thanks to the double HP stat, it's going to be very difficult for Justin, even in Trick Room, to knock out the Lunala, especially because Max Quake is going to be targeting into the Groudon slot. So that's a nice switch in by Gavin so that Incineroar didn't have to take that super effective attack. You look at the special defense boost, however, on Justin's end, and we saw just how pivotal that was in game uh, in game one because it was able to take the uh, hits at plus two. Palkia actually hangs on just barely with 10 HP on this turn. You're going to have a defense drop, which will be hurtful against the Groudon and Incineroar if they ever get an attack here. Calyrex's defense drop doesn't matter because of the White Herb. Here is the Hydro Pump in the sun into a Dynamax Lunala. Palkia actually knocks itself out thanks to Life Orb. Yeah, that uh, was that the most effective Hydro Pump I've ever seen. Uh, see some of that HP coming back as well from the grassy terrain. Uh, you know, the field effects kind of making a big difference in both these matches. You know, last game we see uh, G Max Wildfire you know, slowly whittling Pokemon down, and this time kind of just allowing them to laugh some attacks off. So now Justin is down to his final two Pokemon in Cowarx, Ice Rider, and the Real Boom. The Grassy Train is already set up, meaning you're not able to reset that for later. So you are, with these next three turns, you're eventually going to run out of that, you know, Grass Boost, either your Grassy Glide or Wood Hammer, whatever attack you want to go for. Groudon switching out for Gavin into the Incineroar slot, and now there is nothing Justin can do about it because he already used his White Herb on the, uh, the Max Phantasm lowering his defense. This attack drop is going to stick thanks to Incineroar. Grassy Glide into Incineroar though, a great switch by Gavin because Incineroar takes essentially no damage once Grassy Terrain is gonna recover that up. And then Max Quake though instead will go into the Incineroar. So I, you know, I reject what I just said. Now it is actually pretty low. Yeah, it's a big play there. Uh, you know, this Incineroar is a pretty important Pokemon for what's left of this matchup. You know, not only is it cycling those Intimidates, but it does have a great type matchup against both these Pokemon. But uh, for now, Lunala just blasting away on this Rillaboom. Yeah, that Max Phantasm goes into the Rillaboom, lowering his defense, doing about half, so you would know that uh, another one would take it out. And now the Incineroar, who did just switch in, you can you can, uh, you can can fake out the Rillaboom next turn, so that would stop that damage, but there's nothing really stopping the Calyrex from going for another Max Quake into the Incineroar slot and then getting a third special defense boost. Yeah, it's kind of just have to decide what you want on Gavin's side, right? You know, if you switch in, uh, Incineroar out here, uh, you can still get one more Intimidate, but uh, the, the threat of that is, yeah, it's just, you don't want to let, allow Calyrex to start chaining knockouts and just getting its attack back by uh, getting those chilling Nay boosts. Incineroar does switch out, though, for Gavin into the Groudon, so uh, deciding, you know, taking the risk that he will not max Hailstorm in the slot, and the Grassy Glide goes into Groudon. He's able to take that hit. Max Quake, though, does Calyrex double target into that Groudon slot? The answer is yes. Justin makes the call. It's not enough, though. Groudon just hangs on barely, and he's going to be able to stick around for the next turn. So now it is all up to, well, now that's plus three special defense onto Calyrex, so this Max Phantasm into Rillaboom isn't even enough to get a KO either. Yeah, it seems like uh, these Pokemon have been trained in such a way it's really tough to get them out. Uh, it's a big survival on Groudon, though. Um, you know, it's kind of like awkwardly still on the field now, which, uh, you know, is a great where you know, it's facing down two Pokemon that can pretty easily knock it out. Uh, but despite that, yeah, I mean, again, avoiding that chilling Nay boost for yet one more turn. Um, and the, the, mo the most, uh, as much as possible, you're Gavin just trying to keep that Calyrex under control. It's going to take a while to knock it out probably now because of uh, all those special defense boosts. But Incineroar is still in the back. Potentially could give, uh, you know, one good thwack to that Calyrex on its way out. Yeah, and uh, the Groudon showing the leftovers in this matchup, uh, it's definitely it's definitely an, an option, but you, more commonly you'd see maybe Citrus Berry or White Herb or Salt Vest, some of those different things. So the leftovers is going to give you, you know, on top of the Grassy Terrain, you're going to get two forms of recovery every turn. Yeah, I mean, it makes it really hard to ignore the Groudon, right? Like, there's a real threat that actually gets back up to enough health that it becomes a problem again. Um, it's kind of interesting, too, that it was able to survive that attack despite not having the Assault Vest, right? Right. Uh, Groudon not known for its amazing special defense, but it was just enough there. 
Yep, and then the uh, the Rillaboom is not worried about a fake out, so he's still in this last turn of Trick Room. You don't care about Rillaboom speed because you have priority gla uh, Grassy Glides. So Gavin is definitely aware that there's potentially a Grassy Glide coming into that side. So he will switch Incineroar into that slot, getting another Intimidate. So now Calyrex has been Intimidated two times in this match. Yeah, all Calyrex needs is the first knockout to help out start bringing that attack back up thanks to its Chilling Nay ability. But this Glacial Lance is going to be resisted into Incineroar and do hardly any damage to the Lunala. But knockoff from the Rillaboom, and thanks to those multiple, uh, not only the multiple Intimidates, but also because Lunala isn't holding an item anymore because it consumed its Power Herb, does not do enough damage. So here we have the Moon Guys Beam into Calyrex, and that's what plus three special defense will do for you, is that Moon Guys Beam from Lunala is not even a two-hit KO. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a big deal there where, you know, we're so used to Lunala kind of just like checking Calyrex, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's had a lot of time to get strong. Uh, Twisted Ventures do return to normal here. Uh, you know, Calyrex is on the field, kind of at least theoretically threatening a potential trick room. Uh, you know, uh, Gavin would probably need to get a double target here to stop that. So uh, there's some mind games to be played. You know, uh, double targeting into a protect would be uh, very bad here. Um, but still, I mean, uh, even with that knockoff, I mean, it's not super safe for Rillaboom to try to pick up knockouts here either. Um, Justin's going to have to make uh, the right call for sure on this turn just to stay in the game, and then probably a couple more. Uh, you know, Groudon, uh, low HP, but still exists in the back there, something he's going to have to consider with his game plan, and we do see that Protect coming out from Calyrex. Yeah, and the Incineroar actually feels pretty comfortable against Calyrex and Rillaboom, right, as it's Fire type, which hits both of them super effectively. The Fake Out goes into Protect, so the correct call from Justin on this turn. And and Moon Guys Beam, Lunala not falling for it, does not double target the Calyrex in the situation. Instead, hits the Rillaboom, and Rillaboom hangs on with 7 HP. Goes for the U-turn into the Incineroar just for the neutral damage there instead of going for a Grass Attack. Obviously, you're down to your last two, so you can't switch out anyway. Yeah, and you know, potentially you, uh, you know, getting Incineroar down into range for... Uh uh, a glacial lance double knockout there where I guess that's uh, <laughs> you know it's like it's a sort of a strange win kind of be looking for but yeah we just see the forfeit here yeah and Gavin Michaels is going to win that set 2-0 and move on to top four here in Vancouver a very impressive set we 